welcoming you to the readings of the I Ching. We're 14 years into these readings, Sunday to Sunday to Sunday, and it comes to you. We're around the world in so many countries, over 135 countries, and so many souls tune in to listen. Some people listen alone, some while they're walking, some in groups, and some with the one that you love. And the information comes to us at just the right time. So today, before you listen, ask a question, an internal question about your life path, love, commerce, art, Whatever is in there, whatever question is, bring it out. Because that is the magic of the I Ching. It reaches in and talks to us about who we are in that great remembrance. The remembrance without time. Take a breath. You're home. travel in time yet time is an illusion love is without time yeah. the haiku which is written before I throw the coins before I delve into the sortilege of the I Ching and they seem to match the day's astrology where we are and we come to the remembering who we are and this week is about returning I mean where you been huh? we're going to ask that question where you been where you been is part of who you are you know where you're going <laughs> it's not part of who you are because you don't know <laughs> the moment you think you know you best hang up your boots because <laughs> you're going to be wrong <laughs> wrong is good it's a little bit slap upside the head but you know wrong works so we have number 24 the I Ching section that's called Fu returning two trigrams one on top of each other the one below is about thunder Chen the ones above is about earth so we think about that, we're having earth and thunder coming at the same time, coming to the place where it's going to wake us up because there's something to listen to, and that's what this is about. It's about listening and paying attention to what the advice is and letting it in. The wisdom this week says it's been a narrow passage. All is opening. Spirit hails love, a joyous returning. When a wound has become infected, it's not going to heal until the poison is removed. And this is the condition now. There's been battle around you. You've been in battle. And now the battle has finished and you're coming back a bit beat up, a bit battered, and really tired. But you're returning. And most of you is here. Most is intact. It's for the most part, it's your ego that's taking the hits. And that's what feels the wounding. The ego would say, hey, re retreat. You blew it. Be in shame. Hey, don't go for that. Don't let the ego shame you, see, because there is no shame. And there is no blame. And that's for sure. Because we're humans. And this is part and parcel of the process to wholeness, to light, and to opening our place to love. Mm -hmm. 
So we come to what really is the real teaching and any, any teachings that are anything other than simple are not meant for these times. We need the simplicity of advice, the, that which will salve our wounds, that which will heal the spirit because we get beat up. I mean, our spirit takes some hits and it's gotta be cared for. You know, you're wounding your spirit, your heart. You gotta take care of it. In essence, it's all coming back to the place where we take care of the soul. This idea about the archeology span of the soul that's gonna be the retreat that I'm leading at Esalen in May. It's about that coming back, healing the soul. Old relationships, well, they're getting ready. <laughs> they need some healing. And you know, you might say, oh, I got a great relationship. It's really good with my lover, my parents, my friends, whatever it is. But there's some healing that needs to take place because if you say that you have no healing, you're in denial, you're lying. Because we're always doing it, we're always improving it. We open up to that place, to the primal mind. And in that primal mind is where we are free of a troubled ego. the earth has tides of the waters, tides of the winds, tides of events that happened. Well, the tides have changed. And it's that change that washes away what's been built, washes away what your desires have been, what you've cared for. And now you're coming back. And what you're finding are the things that you thought were lost. Right? It's a joyous time. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to be of ritual, it's time to be in humility, to be in grace, because you're coming back. And you might find some stuff that's out of balance, and that's okay, because you got the tools. You got the tools to heal it, which is an examination, it's a self-examination. You know, it's about, you know, we talk about taking inventory, to look and see, all right, what is that that I've not taken care of? What part of me? is there, and anything that you leave unhealed, it's gonna spread. And it's that bad apple that's in the barrel of, of other apples, and you gotta get it out of there so it doesn't carry danger to the rest. This time is a time of promise. It's a promise of love and abundance and stability. Yeah, as we move forward, what is it that we really want? <clears throat> you know, we want abundance, sure, but stability. Let ourselves be solid. Because in being solid, we accept anything that comes. And if it's really good, we embrace it. And if it's not, we say, adios. <laughs> we let it go. If it doesn't work for you, let it go. You know, if you find yourself behaving in a manner that is going to please other people, Take a look at that one. It's about not so much pleasing yourself, not so much about the self-aggrandizement, the ego, but it is about being true, right? If you look at the forces on Earth, the forces of, of Gaia, that at one minute, the wind can blow. It's unexpected, and the wind will blow, devastate the landscape. It'll feed fires that blacken the Earth, and then there's stillness. And in that stillness is the magic and the returning of life. There's a universal law of life and death, yin and yang, leaving and returning because you gotta leave sometimes and then you gotta come back. And you come back and you're changed. It's a natural order of things because right now you're standing at the point where it's fresh. The return is fresh. Now behind you, you know, kind of left in the dust is some old patterns of behavior that just don't work anymore. Some convoluted associations that have been fraught with difficulties and mostly they're coming because you just weren't honest with yourself 
or maybe trusted too long, you know, in the same place. You know, the word from the song, did I stay too long at the fair? And sometimes we do. And then we wake up and come through our thinking and our analyzing as we move forward. Look, we cannot have summer return in winter. It doesn't work that way. Now it's to either trust the energy of returning or get embroiled in an unpopular and unsolvable puzzle of obstacles on a road that leads to nowhere. And you can just keep going and keep going until you're exhausted and you fall out. So it is with the situation now. It's not about thinking yourself through it. You've tried that <laughs> and it doesn't work. And that's not the time to analyze your situation. You've done that and it's exhausted you. Look, give yourself a break now and give those around you who are observing you, give them a break because it can exhaust the ones who love you when you see it going on. It's about being fair. It's about being in the place of releasing old patterns. What does it come to? It comes to surrender. In the Tarot, if you see the hanged man hanging upside down by one foot, he can do nothing but surrender, and that's the advice. Surrender to let this cycle of gradual progress towards love and success happen without thinking, right? Don't think, I'm going to make it happen fast. Don't listen to the ego that says, you better get moving, you better do this now, man. You're running out of time. Well, that ain't right. It is that you're going to move towards your success, but going slow. And as you go slow, you know, you really do take time to smell the roses, you know, to pay attention to the beauty. A wonderfully great teacher who passed on, Thich Nhat Hanh, and he talks about walking meditation, paying attention to where your feet go when you're walking, right? Making sure you don't step on anybody's house and just walk, you know? You keep on walking, and you're thinking about it to go to the place of nothing, right? So as you're walking and you see what's around you, know that there's a coming tide that is going to move you forward. And this tide right now is unstoppable. So let it happen, because if you try to not let it happen, you think you're going to wait for something, you're going to block yourself, and you will become tired, and your accomplishments will just tumble down the mountain like a landslide. There's a wave coming, so allow yourself to take the ride to the shore. And when you come in, you're going to be refreshed, and you're going to be rested, and you're not going to be tired. You're not going to be weak from the effort, because it's choice. It's always been about choice. Am I going to choose to have this work? Am I going to choose to be refreshed? Am I going to choose to grow? Am I going to choose to be a part of what is important to me? It's about rebirth in a lot of ways. And that's going to come about not by pushing forward through the jungle of old patterns and promises, right? The energy will be found by returning, by following those little breadcrumbs, those pebbles that you leave on the path so that you can find your way back from whence you came. We're returning, remember. In you was a knowing, a knowing seated somewhere in the recesses of the primitive mind, the primitive sense, monkey mind, of wisdom. Now you knew this time was gonna come and you got a little bit scared. You're gonna come back, you're gonna have to review what was there. And it's okay, but walk through it because you're gonna find that the fear really was just put up there by the ego to stop you from growing. You know, I always get the question, you know, why does the ego get in our way? Why does that negative voice, why is it there? I can't really tell you. I mean, I've been in, done this work for so long, and I really just don't know why that negativity is there, but I know it's there. Is it about balance, maybe? Is it from the primal mind, maybe? I don't know. But it really allows us to move forward because it puts us into self-examination. Your primal mind, so gentle. It's in, in its innocence, 
that primal mind, it's going to guide you back to where success and abundance is waiting for you. Remember, the primal mind, it's simple. It's before all this stuff was piled on top of it, right? All the stuff from church, from state, from parents, from school, all the stuff that got in there, you know, that you have to reject a lot of it. There's some good stuff there, but mostly you got to do it because you're going to come to the time of being an individual, individuation, right? Setting yourself there. When you arrive there, you're going to know it because it's going to be familiar. It's going to be like remembering lines from a poem that you read so long ago or one that was read to you as a child. It is in that light of innocence where you find the power of the creative, the power of the strength, the power to bring things to completion and to welcome that which you most desire. If you desire love, be love. All right, don't be surprised. As you open this place, you're going to find members of your community, your tribe coming your way. As you go into this, remember, we're getting, going into a process. And if we follow the instructions, or like I say, follow the breadcrumbs as you're coming back, Sometimes you get afraid that you're going to be lonely. It's all, you're going to have a lot of rejection around you. Well, remember, sometimes there is rejection, but rejection is direction, right? So as you're in this walk, you're going to find that, you know, your, your fellows around you, your tribal members, community members, Maybe it's around work, maybe it's around your relationship. They're going to come your way. That's going to fill the gap of aloneness, this aloneness that you've been feeling, because that's what's happening now, is we are that. So what, why is it? Well, it's a cleansing. You know, we all want to be found by love, right? And maybe you were in a place where you could not be found, that you were behind a, well, a, a wall of self-involvement, behind a wall of judging others. All this that obs obscured your authentic self, coming back to authenticity. Open your heart and mind to listen as the soul returns and speaks to you with beloved ideas. Go talk story with the tribe. Let yourself be loved, don't be afraid. You know, you've been really good at giving and fixing, right? I'm going to take care of this. I'll take care of you. I'm going to fix this for you. But now, shut up. <laughs> it's time to listen and time to receive. Because when you're quiet, it's going to come to you without effort. You got it? Because it's simple. Your mind has been so busy and so noisy and not able to hear, not able to see which way to turn. Where to go to seek the knowledge that you need to extricate yourself from the hold that the ego had on you. Now in this returning, you're being shown promising bypaths where self-knowledge will be found, and it is in this self-knowledge that holds the key to freedom. What is that freedom? It's a freedom to love, it's a freedom to be loved. The freedom to speak, freedom to be heard, freedom of receiving the gift of stillness. And it is in stillness where you can listen you come to stillness so you can hear that inner voice of truth. Remember, if in that stillness you're hearing negative stuff about you, right? You're not good enough, you didn't do it right, all that. Well, we're not meant to, to, to be a part of that. The ego will tell us that. And remember, anything negative that you hear about yourself is a lie. And if you feel it, you hear something negative, like you're not, like basically you're not good enough for whatever it is, write it down. And then right, right under it, well, wait a minute, I am good enough for that. I do deserve it. And as simple as that seems, it works, see? Stop and listen. That's such a big one, to stop and listen. Because in the sounds of nature, there's a code. The code that speaks to you through the perfume of nature. The perfume of the wind by listening quietly to the calling bird singing, 
listening to the flowing waters and to the beating of a true loving heart that's yours, all in harmony with the sentient beings of this, your home planet, right? Your home, Earth, is holding you in the loving grace of Gaia. You know, take these words, the ones that say, be love and teach peace. Very important to open up to that. And then look, see if there's a missing component in your life, right? Is there a missing component in your life? Is that missing component service? Because we're made to be of service to others. And it could be to one person. It could be to family. It could be your neighbors. It could be to the waters of the world, to the earth, to the children, to the animals, whatever it is. But we're meant to do it. I mean, it's a good thing, right? Working for the greater good, blah, blah, blah. But it really is good because it opens you up to receive, right? Look, why, why do we do this? Why do we listen to the Ching? Why do we go to Sortilage? Why do we meditate? Why do we want to learn? Why do we open up? It is so that we can be better people. And better people are happy people. And we deserve happiness, right? We deserve good love. We, we deserve abundance. We deserve good sensual sexual relationships. We deserve to allow ourselves to be seen. We deserve to love. We deserve to be loved and let that open yourself to that. And understand as you travel on this road less traveled that everything is there for you. Nothing will be held back. You know, the wisdom said has been a narrow passage where all is opening and spirit hails love. It is a joyous returning. thank all of you who wrote when I asked for you to kind of tell me what, how, how the I Ching was working or not working for you and what it's meant to you in your life. And that really is important for me as I write because that gives me input. I mean, I do feel you, but I'd love to read what's going on. And I heard some beautiful, beautiful messages in this week. And please keep it coming. Keep it coming. I've talked about my, my book, The New Earth I Ching, which is available on Amazon, also on Kindle. Um, it's a good reference point. Soon you're going to get some information about booking the time at uh, Esalen in May for the uh, retreat, The Archaeology of the Soul. And that's the first one of a series as we come into this time of opening of love and of being open in heart. I leave you with in La Kesha Lakin. I am the other you. And I like it that way. Yes, I do. Namaste, y'all. Remember, you're never alone. Spirit is there, hailing love for you that great taxi of love come on this way pick me up says, says spirit I'm going to take you towards love and, and that's what this was about you know because when we return you're going to find what's been waiting for you is love abundance heart and peace of mind namaste my brothers namaste my sisters join together do the work of the combination of the yin of the young, old and the young, the new and what's been done. I love you.
Namaste. Be love.